you've got questions, we've got answers. Tune in Tuesdays at 12 on Facebook Live and Instagram Live, where we will be hosting a variety of community experts that will answer your questions. Julianne here. Join me Tuesday when we speak about love, dating, and relationships all through the holidays. Can't wait to see you. See you then. Meeting is now streaming live on Facebook. Awesome. Oh, yeah. Yeah, That's the magic button. The magic button <laughs> went on. Well, hi everyone. It's Jillian and Michelle, and welcome and, to- and Julie and. <laughs> We love you. I didn't mean not to introduce you. you. I'm used to doing it on the back end. I'm sorry. <laughs> that is fine. <laughs> okay. And welcome to Tip Tuesday. And today we have an- uh, another one of our returning guests. And now I'm going to introduce her. That is Julianne Cantarella. We are so excited to have you back. She is a licensed social worker. She is a unbelievable dating coach and she is all about empowering women and men and men to take control of their love lives so they can create the relationship that they desire and they deserve so um you know we do know that in the breast cancer community dating can be a very vulnerable subject especially around the holidays and i know you think well why around the holidays but we're going to address that So we're really thrilled that she decided to come back and chat with us and give us some of her incredible wisdom, which we so appreciate. And uh, before we start, Michelle, I have to ask you, do we have any housekeeping to do? I love when you ask me that question. (laughs) Um, Housekeeping, girl, housekeeping. Actually, we really don't have that much housekeeping other than the fact that um, all of the information that we have is on our website and Julian has a dedicated page. I'm trying to pull it up right now. And of course, you know, you know how technology is. Let me try one more time. There it is. Okay. So on our website, on our homepage, you'll see resources and conversations. And Julianne is right there. And she has, like I said, a dedicated page where you can learn more about her and her offerings, a little message to our beautiful self community. You can see her past episode. You can hear her past episode. And then there's also um, her guide to the 10 commandments of online dating, which is available there too. So lots of information under resources and conversation on our webpage. Fantastic. So are we ready? I think we're ready. Okay, we're ready. let's ask, ask Julianne. Julianne. <laughs> All right, here we go. So um, Julianne, we sent out a calling for some questions and I pulled the ones that I felt were the most common themes that seem to be coming in. Um, I also want to say for those that are watching, and hi, Susan, hi, Dina, hi, Marcy. So everybody's out, you know, jumping on now. So if anyone has any questions, please jump in with them. We're happy to answer live or go back in later and answer them for you. So let me start with the, with the first, cause I have a few ready. Yeah. So what is considered an appropriate gift if you're new into a relationship? So for instance, what do I do if there's some super lopsided giving here? Like, all right, I'm dating uh, him or her and I give them a gold watch and they give me a card or vice versa. So I guess it's a two part question, appropriate gift giving. And what do I do for lopsided giving? Okay. Mm. So no one should be giving a gold watch early on. You know. <laughs> I'm a fossil, a fossil. Okay. <laughs> um, so like, I'm going to put like parameters around that. Cause it's kind of an open question. So what's considered a new relationship, right? So I'm going to say anywhere from two to three months is kind of a new relationship. Uh, So at that point, we're looking to really get to know that person, right? We're still getting to, it's still getting to know you phase at three months, believe it or not. I know a lot of people think, oh, I can add water. It's instant. We know each other. That's not necessarily true. You're still getting to know each other at that point. So what I ask you to do is, or ask my clients to do is, pay attention to that person, find out what they really like. Um, What are their hobbies? What do they do when they're not around you? And then kind of tailor your gifts to 
that. So you're showing that you're really paying attention to who they are, what their likes are. You're, you're, you're more, you're trying to find out more about them than just, you know, that exciting attraction. Um, I always say, go with, go with a safe bet, like a book or Again, if they're like into craft beers, that's fine too. I would tell you don't do anything over the top and grandiose, especially if you're not sure what the definition of this relationship is just yet. Okay. You don't want to, you don't want to like overwhelm them and be like, oh my gosh, maybe this person's thinking it, it's way bigger than what it is. Right. Okay. So that's part one, which I love. Mm-hmm. What would you say to the lopsided part of it? Like, let's say the gentleman uh, I'm dating uh, gives me, I don't know, I'm making it up. Uh, After three months, a gold necklace and all I have prepared for him is a card. All right. So this goes back to communication, right? We're going to talk about really implementing communication skills as you're growing a relationship. And I know this might take the spontaneity and romance out of things, but if you're coming up on a holiday, you have to have a conversation conversation around what is it you're going to give to each other. Just have a, a simple conversation and say, listen, you know, the holidays are coming, obviously, and I'd like to get you something, but I don't know what you're interested in or something that maybe um, would you really want and you wouldn't get for yourself. Have that conversation. You really want to try and grow a re, you know communication in your relationship early. So I, again, I know it's not romantic. It takes that spontaneity out of it, but you're not going to end up with the gold watch. And, well, and, here's and, a question that came in from yeah. Susan. Do sure. you accept it? If it's, if you're well, like, oh, 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 hey. oh, hey, do you accept it? Sure. So okay. that's a great question because it depends upon where you are in your dating. If you're three weeks in, I would say no. Like you're going to have to have that conversation and just say, oh my gosh, this is so lovely. It's so thoughtful. Um, But I think it might be a little too much um, at this point. Obviously, you're going to use your own language. You're going to temper it. It's going to be soft. But I think taking an over-the-top gift is going to be, um, I, I think it might also send the wrong message. You know, you may be attracted to this person, but you don't know them. Right. You really don't know them. Right. Okay. And I feel, yeah, that feels awkward too. Like, yeah, if I take this now, they think. Right. Right. We're right. here, but I'm really yeah. over here. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. It, it, it really, it does say that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Symbolism. So, thank you, Susan. That was great. Um, now the next two questions are kind of similar. So I'll just lead into the next one. So what do you do if you've been dating someone for a very short while, you haven't been intimate with them yet? And they give you an intimate gift, like forget an over the top gift, but more like sexy underwear, sexy lingerie. Is that, are they nudging you? And how should you respond if you're not there? Okay. So they very well may be nudging you or they may be suggesting, you know, when you're ready, I'm ready. They also may be sending the message that they find you attractive and they do find you sexy. So hopefully that gives a little bit of a confidence. Um, But again, if it's too early, you're going to go back to that communication and say, you know, um, I really appreciate it. Uh, So, and you can do like a little flirtatious saying when I'm ready, I can't wait to use this. When I'm ready, I'll wear it for you. (laughs) Exactly. Exactly. No reason not to be flirtatious around it and and be appreciative. And I do think on some level, it does speak to someone finding you desirable. And and I think that's nice. That is nice. I hadn't really thought of it that way. When I was scoping through these questions, I had kind of different thoughts, but I really, I love that. All right. So the next one, we're going to get a little more cancer specific. Um, What if I receive a gift early in the relationship, like, um, I don't know, again, like a weekend getaway. That's a big one. Like we're going to go away for the weekend and it's early and you haven't really told him or her about your post-cancer body and you know, how your body reacts or whether you have breasts or not, or scars or, or whatever's happening or that you feel uncomfortable in your body, but you really do want that person to stick around. 
you just weren't ready for that kind of an intimate gift, which can happen a lot. These weekend gifts are very, very popular. You just want to tell the person slow down, but you haven't addressed any of it yet. Like, how do you even, I, I just imagine overnight, like yeah, an overnight. overnight, like if I, I mean, I've yeah. been married for a long time, but if I was single and post-cancer, I could see myself going, uh, 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 if I haven't explained what happens with my body or what it does mm -hmm. or, you know. Yeah. So even like stepping outside someone's cancer diagnosis, um, a gift like that is too much too soon. It, it is, it, you know, we're, we're qualifying all of this with, um, it's an early relationship, right? So I would say that I really don't want you to go away with someone this early in the relationship. Um, you don't, I, I, I can't stress enough how important it is for people to understand you, if you don't know someone, going away for a weekend with them really isn't going to solidify a relationship. Relationships grow over time by spending time together with someone, really seeing them um, in all different situations. You want to know how someone's going to react when there's stress. You want to know how someone's going to re react when there's a joyful situation. Some people can't even manage that. So you really need to get to know someone as you go through your relationship and trying to go away for a weekend with someone. While it's thoughtful, while it's nice, it's not the best approach early in a relationship. I now to discuss the piece of, you know, discussing your body, um, again, and I, I do think we talked about this last time as well, you know, if you get to know someone and, okay, intimacy starts outside the bedroom. So if you get to know someone and you really connect with them emotionally, when you get into the bedroom, it's, there's going to be stress around it. We, we, we all know that. I mean, it, it, you know, we're very vulnerable when we're naked in front of someone. That's like, we're at our most vulnerable. But if you have that connection, if you have that emotional intimacy, it will be less stressful and you will feel less vulnerable if all those other pieces are there. So remember, intimacy starts outside of the bedroom. You're sharing, you're growing together, you're getting to know each other, you're getting to really know that other person and their wants and desires and needs. Then when you get into the bedroom, that connection will already be there and it'll be so much more um, organic and natural. Okay, that's great. I, I, well, I do of... remember, I, I wanted to just chime in. I remember the last time you were on, you had mentioned, you know, don't disclose everything on the first date. Oh, or yeah. Second, you know, let it evolve naturally. And that would kind of segue into going into the bedroom and being intimate and overnight, over time, over time. Yeah, and I'd like to share this point of view because I'm asked by my clients who are survivors or who have other medical issues. They've said to me, what if he says to me, why didn't you tell me earlier? Mm. This is what you need to say. You need to say, I didn't know where this relationship was going. I didn't know if you were the one for me or if you felt I was the one for you. Mm -hmm. I needed to get clarity on that before I disclose that information. That's beautiful. That's excellent. That's very healthy, very they, healthy behavior. Oh, right. Where were you 25 <laughs> years ago for me when I was a lunatic running around? <laughs> love me, love me, love me. <laughs> well, we all want to be loved, so I get that. <laughs> oh my God. But it's oh. like taking a moment and really thinking, thinking, thinking it through instead of being, you know, ruled by your emotions. Ooh, yeah. And I do think that's a youth thing too. We are so ruled by our emotions in our youth. And these are things now, as we get a little more mature that we kind of think through, I have a random question for you. It's kind of just random. Uh, someone said, great advice, Julianne. Absolutely. We do agree a hundred percent, which is why we love when she's here. Um, <laughs> you're here. Is it an indicator if let's say you're going along early in the relationship and, uh, cause that is like, you know, what we're talking about and 
you have bought the, a gift for someone that you're dating and they have no reciprocation whatsoever, not even a card. Do you take that on personally or is that just more, that's who they could be or that's where they're at? I'm just a little curious with that. Okay. So it's a little bit out of context only because in my mind, I'm thinking about different stages, right? Yes, so, and I apologize. because No, I no, 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 here. it's fine. <laughs> no, 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 it's fine. And, okay. and I would, I'm, I'm just kind of starting out there. So if you're like just dating, this is why it's so important to communicate. Mm -hmm. Right. This is so why it's so important to have that a conversation. And, and I, I know that might take the, again, the spontaneity and the romance out of it on some level, but you don't want to be standing there going, Oh, I got you this. And now I get nothing. Right. Cause it, it, I think we take it personally. Like, like and, I, and, I, and, I gift. I'm a Leo, by the way, I'd be like, what? <laughs> <laughs> uh, you have got to get her a gift. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Next time I see you. No. <laughs> That's it. Everybody's different and everybody's gift yeah. giving is different. Oh, uh, yes. Yes. And, and we know about love languages, right? So some people's love language is actually gift giving or acts of right. service, right? And for others, it's not. It's quality time or, or what have you. So you really need to know where you are in your relationship. So I'm going to tell you if you're a month in and, you know, again, this is all based on my coaching where mm -hmm. I'm telling my clients, you know, slow and steady wins the race. You need to take things slowly. If you like jump in and things are a fire, there's, you know, it's more likely to fizzle out. Okay. All right. And again, anyone, if you have any questions, please just jump on in with your questions. And I think, you know, when it comes to, this is a beyond cancer thing. This is a human thing. I think mm -hmm. we, we look as the new year is the time we all go, all right, this is what I'm going to do. Uh, X, Y, Z is I'm going to start fresh. Cause why diet now? Seriously. Right. I'm about to make a batch of brownies. There's no sense. There's just no sense. So, and I think that includes for a lot of us uh, in relationships, like we're like January one, I'm going to, I'm going to get out there. I'm going to put myself out there January one. So in, you know, we all make these promises. So we don't, so we don't break those promises to ourselves, which I think it's important to keep promises to yourself. What are some tips you can give um, to really set the new year right? If. Someone's like, this is it. I'm getting out there. 2021's my year. What would you, what advice would you give them? So they, they succeed. Hmm. Okay. So I have a bunch of advice. Good. I we love think, it. <laughs> I think I want to start with be mindful. There's no fast track to love. So if people are putting, saying, okay, I'm going to step out. I'm going to start dating the likelihood of them finding someone immediately is very, it's a very small percentage, right? So there's a process, believe it or not. I know it's not romantic. I'm the first one to admit it, but there's a process to finding someone to share your life with, especially if you haven't dated in a while. Now, let's say you're going to dip your toe in the pool of online dating. Um, if that's the case, which I actually think you should, but safely, um, know that you want to give a few more than one person a, ch a chance right so my piece of advice is don't jump into the first relationship or the or that comes along or try and forge a relationship with the first person you find attractive do some dating right um i also think that you need to be strategic in your approach so you're also going to want to cast the wide net if you can, right? You know, you don't want to become overwhelmed. You don't want to be drained. It can be very, very emotionally charged. Um, but try and, you know, use other friends, use family members, whatever, to let them know that you're looking for a partner. Maybe they know someone. Maybe they didn't know that you were interested in finding someone. And so they're like, oh, wow, I have someone for you that I'd like to make an introduction to. So, so think about that. Um, I'm trying to think what else, because I have so many pieces of yeah, advice. Yeah. I just want yeah. yeah. Just um, take your time and think it through. I love that. <laughs> what you're saying is great. We have a lot of people are like, hearts I, on hearts, hearts. I love that cast a wide net. 
Yeah, I mean, because you never know where you're go going to meet someone. So it may be online, it may be through a friend, it may be at, you know, we talked about last time about volunteering, it could meet someone there. So think about different ways that you can meet someone who's like-minded. I think that's a Don't really good way. Don't get disappointed, you said. Don't get disappointed or overwhelmed. No. So what I, okay. So a common theme that I see, and I literally just had this conversation yesterday with a coaching client, is she said to me, why do I keep attracting men and, and really finding myself attracted to them and really interested in meeting them? And then they disappear and then I'm left and I, I just don't want to date anymore. Mm. But wait, so I, I tried to get clarity and give her clarity through coaching. And my biggest question was, what was he like when you met him? Mm. I never met him. I knew she didn't. I never met him. We just had text exchanges. We had a phone call. Um, I really liked his profile, but Michelle, honestly, I hear this all the time. So yeah. women create this fantasy in their mind of who this person is. And yes. on subconsciously, they're saying, I'm in a relationship with them. And in yeah. fact, they're not. It's all in your head. It's all in your head. It's all, all in your head. head, but you know, not to put them down in any way, but I want to give that, that paint that picture to give clarity. So if someone doesn't disappears on you, if you haven't met them, they're not a partner. They're not a, a person you're in a relationship with. So keep that in mind when you're dating, there's no fast track. There's no fast track to a relationship. That's phenomenal. I love that. I, I just think that if that is the one piece of advice that everybody, you've given us so much great advice in this half hour that if anybody wants to take that one piece, there's no fast track to love. Yeah. Not no. a fast track. It's a process and it takes a little while. I love it. Oh my gosh. I love it. Um, you know, once again, Julianne, you're amazing. I hope we Thank get you. to see you again. Maybe you'll join us in January at some point again. Absolutely. Please. I'd love to come back. Your advice is so valuable and we so appreciate it. And I think Dating is tough, but it's even a little tougher in the cancer community. Mm -hmm. And it's also tough on the people, whether you have, you know, whether whoever your partner is, same, same, opposite, you know, um, we finding it's, it's, I'm trying to say it's difficult on the person that we're dating also, or we're married to mm -hmm. also, it's not just about us. It's about them too, once they get to know us. So these are all pearls of wisdom. Yeah all the way around and we so communication yeah. communication is key it's key so uh michelle and i just and i'm sure julianne too we just want to tell everyone to have a merry christmas to have a magical happy new year i do want to say join us next week on the 29th when we're going to be chatting with a sexuality educator and therapist her name is paula leach and she's going to be taking all your questions and so, hey, Juliana, if you're uh, Juliana, if you're around, jump in. We'd love to have you on the chat because I feel like dating and sex therapy, like everything kind of goes together. Absolutely. So, that sounds you know, wonderful. So everyone have an amazing, amazing, happy, joyous holiday. We love you. Thanks for coming in. As always, stay strong. Stay strong. Stay positive. Stay positive. You, you are Beautiful. Beautiful. We love you guys. Thank you. Mwah. Merry Christmas, everybody. Bye. Merry Take Christmas. Care. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye.